watch. Wake up. You got fire to watch. This is Pachu. Do you read me? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Contower. This is Pachu. Do you read me, old? Pacho, this is Contower. I read you Lima Charlie. Contower, Contower. Request permission to launch and commence the field up. Over. Stand by. Pacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Pacho that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. Hurrah. Get some. Hurrah. What's going on, everybody? Baby Friday or Friday Night Eve is once upon is upon us once again, and goddamn, it's almost the weekend. Hey, we got a we got a great show for you today, just like we always do. Uh, but before we get started, let's get all the pleasantries out of the way. There's the word I was fucking looking for all the all this time: pleasantries, pleasantries, pleasantries. Anyways, like, let's get that stuff out of the way. Hey, this show is brought to you by the great folks of Primerica. When was the last time anybody here took a look at? your investment statement or your life insurance policy at that if you haven't probably most the last time you took it is when that when agent gave you that you know those documents handed your stack like this big and and you just kind of put it back on the shelf and where it's collecting all kinds of dust well if you really want to know what you know that document is like and just a quick uh introduction information Give one of the folks from Trimerica a call. It's, it, you know, all the information right there is on the show link bio. They'll be more more than glad to educate you and, and give empower you with some information. That way, you're more and better educated, so you can make a much better decision as it pertains to such an important document that basically is income and asset protection or replacement should something tragic happen to you or you know an individual that holds a policy. So it's all on the show link bio. Check them out. Give them a call. Put your name on there. Send them an email. Somebody will gladly contact you. No commitments. No, you know, no, just great information and go from there. Also, this show is brought to you by the great folks of Castle Global Services. At Castle Global Services, they have a bunch and an, an array of many different services and products, both for your residents and from for your commercial business. Right now, it's we're an enrollment. Um, we're it's some of it, you know annual enrollment. So if you're looking, if you personally or your business is looking to provide a great, you know, great medical health care to your, to your employees or for yourself at a very affordable price, you can basically provide uh, medical insurance under $500 to your entire family. So it's all right there also on the show link bio, uh, or you can go to uh, castleglobalservices.acnido.com. And get some info over there on the on the services tab. Click on there, and uh, just get some information. Again, no commitments, no, no questions asked. Just some great info and go from there. And this show is also being sponsored now by the VA. So here's an awesome message from the VA. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Veteran service organizations, often known as VSOs offer many services for veterans, service members, dependents, and survivors. Whether it's holding job fairs, finding solutions to challenges such as homelessness, health care, or financial issues, or educating veterans on federal, state, county, and local benefits, VSOs are a great resource for veterans. VSOs also offer veterans a place to socialize with other veterans for peer support. Plus, for help filing a claim or appeal, you may want to work with an accredited lawyer, a claims agent, or a VSO. VA trusts these professionals because they're certified in VA claim and appeal processes. To learn more, go to va.gov and search for VSOs. Thanks, Mike Richmond. And he's right. You, you're you going to see a lot of stuff right now. The great... Everybody's putting all kinds of stuff uh, in regards to Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed there and you drank the water and all that stuff. Bottom line is, folks, you should never, ever have to pay to get your disability and compensation to anybody. There's VSOs and many other uh, folks out there 
who provides this service for free, like the American Legion, the VFW, the Disabled American Veterans, and many, many more. Give us a, you can send, send me a message and I can point you in the, the right direction. I've helped all the veterans with their, and walk them through the process as well. Hey, if this jarhead can do it, you know, so so can you as well. So take advantage of it. Don't don't close the door on some benefits that you gladly deserve. That you know that you've earned uh, for paying. You know, giving you writing that blank check to the United States of America. Hey, this show is also brought to you by you know not, nothing but the Great American Constitution. So I, I raised my hand for 21 years of honorable service, and I still do. And defend, uh, you know, what this document uh, provides for us. So it's all about your right, your freedom of speech, and right to bear arms, among many other things that this document provides for us. So if you like what you see or hear, like, subscribe, and follow. Tell tell your friends all about it. Or if not, I also like to give a shout out to the great folks of SitchRadio.com because hey, this show wouldn't be anywhere without you know Brian Brian Colburn and his team on the back end making making stuff happen for us and. But check out some from the website. They got many other great podcasts. Like I podcast that among many. Okay. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it. All the pleasantries, pleasantries, pleasantries out of the way. Hey, we got a great treat for y'all all the way from the Middle East. We got Uncle Dan in the house. Let's bring his ass up on here. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Well, good morning. It's uh little after 1 a.m. here so hey man uh it's, it's it's always a treat shooting the shit with you um and just talk about things in general man so one first of first of all thank you for being here and thanks for your service thank you sir i appreciate that so, so to dance so uh, let, let me just say it took me a long time to get comfortable with people thanking me for my service well why is that because I gave it freely. I served my country. I served my fellow uh, uh, military members. It's about the people for me. So, uh, you know, it, I enjoyed it. So, you know, people thanking me for doing something that I did freely and willingly and uh, happily, it, it just was, was a bit difficult for me for quite some time. No, I, I can I can agree with that because uh, even when I was in or right after upon retiring, it took me a while to get used to that because, you know, to me, it was just, well, it, it's on the fine print. I mean, that's what comes with the service. I'm, I'm doing this, the volunteer and I get army because, I mean, I'm talking about as a whole, the military. That you know why you know why are you thanking me for something that I know that I know what the fine print says and, and everything, so no need to thank me or you know what I'm saying. It's that whole don't thank me. I work for a living, which by the way I fucking hate it when people used to say that too. Yeah, yeah. but with that said, just uh, personal experiences and then what I read and what I see uh, 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 on the news. There's quite a few people that don't appreciate uh, the service of military members or uh, you know, police or firefighters or medical people too. So uh, when there is somebody that does uh, show appreciation, I appreciate that. I've, I've learned to be able to appreciate it. No, and we... You know, it's funny that when I, I had posted something earlier, a while back, basically, <clears throat> is that, you know, right now, times times are just kind of funky as a whole with society and just the way, you know, many different things coming to light. But, you know, at the end of the day, if shit were to hit the fan, you know, you can have all the other all the pronouns and you can identify as whatever the fuck you, you want to. I mean, let's let let's yeah. let's say it for what it is. So you get they're they're gonna call people like you and me. They're they're, they're gonna call the people who they who they're calling toxic uh, uh, right masculinity right now. They're gonna they're gonna call the people that uh, they they continuously put down because those are the people that step up and and take care of uh, evil 
when evil uh, shows itself. Exactly. I mean, those those are those are the guys and gals that are gonna make shit happen, and mm -hmm. you know, keep the enemy at bay or that beast outside outside of the you know that threshold of that door. Yeah. Um, you know, and and then and, and then oh well, look what we did. It's like no, bitch. Uh, it was me. Uh, I'm the one who, you know, myself and the team. We were the ones who did that. You know, yeah. it's just it's crazy how how things are. Uh, Yes, we're just on some on some trying times, and uh, lately, that's those have been the conversations that I've had. And, you know, and, and the thing is, is it, it, we talk about it is within the culture, but uh, we live it every day. We live it at work every day. Oh yeah, in corporate, in corporate America, or just you know, uh, whether you have a uh, nine to five job, or, or if uh, you know, working for a major corporation, or if you have your own business, or or if you're working at McDonald's, or or any other type of uh, uh, food industry, uh, we deal with that stuff every single day. To where um, the person who makes it happen, when when it's critical and it's time crunch, they they'll lean on you quickly, uh, but. Uh, when it's time to take the kudos and uh, and uh, and hand out the appreciation, they oh, start yeah. looking. They start looking and go, "Well, we have to be diverse with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, you know uh, with the awards, or we have to you know uh, uh, you know be diverse with uh, uh, who we're selecting for different opportunities." And it's like, okay. What did that person do when it was time to to uh, uh, when rubber meets the road when when the job had to be done? Where was that person? They weren't. No. Okay? So the, so the people. It, this is where it matters. So you you'll hear me talk about people being the most important uh, uh, asset with any kind of organization. It doesn't matter what uh, what size the organization or or, or, or what you know. It doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter uh, what uh, uh, company you're in. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's your own company or someone else's company. It does. People will make the organization successful. And anytime you're doing anything to undermine that success by spreading the wealth to people that didn't earn it, um, you're going to create conflict within your organization and the people who actually care, who drive, who, who, who put forth the extra effort to step up and do beyond the standards. They're not going to stop. That's who they are as a person. They'll just go find somewhere else to do it. it, it, it I had a colonel. Uh, well, he was just repeating the words of a gunny that worked for him. But um, actually, um, uh, Lieutenant K uh, Kaczynski, I worked for him in uh, in Japan. This dude was, he was, a one, he was one heck of a guy to work for. I mean, really cool guy. I mean, level-headed. But, you know, he, he, he goes, he's like, hey, Pacho, you know, did I ever tell you about this gunny? I'm like, no, I'm like, no, sir. You know, tell me about him. He goes, well, you know, he's, he was a drone instructor. And he goes, well, you were a drone instructor yourself. I mean, and you can't fuck up, and you can't fix something that parents fucked up for 18 years. You know, because I mean, that's that's how we get some of these kids. Well, I don't 100% agree with that because people are who they are. All right. And they're, they're in the, and whatever environment they're in as they're growing up, they're going to adapt to that environment. But they still are who they are. Right. So, uh, uh, I was in some pretty messed up environments growing up and I was at a, uh, I was literally at a, a fork in a road and didn't even realize I was uh, when I went down the path to join in the Marine Corps. Uh, and it was just a flippant decision. I mean, it was just like instantaneous. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. There was no pre-planning for it. Uh, but I went that road because that's who I was. Um, it wasn't because of the environment I was in. So, um, I, I've, I've seen people that, that, that grew up in amazing environments that just turned into shit people, uh, or other people that just grew up in very harsh, very conditions that just 
once they had control of their own lives, they just excelled at whatever they chose to do. So, yeah. So they, but yeah, you're right. You know, you know, you can't screw up. Yeah. Parents do have, it's not just parents. It's the, it's the community. So they, we, you know, the, the old yeah. adage, it takes a village to raise a child. No, a village does raise a child. Every person that child gets, uh, has contact with ha has impact on that child's life and it can be positive or negative. Um, and, but that child as who they are as a person, and they don't even realize who they are yet, but, but their predisposition, uh, disposition in a particular direction, they're going to take that negative and make it another negative, or they're going to flip it and, and say, okay, I'm, I, you know, I don't ever want to do that and, and, you know, and become a better person because of that negative. So, you know, each, it, we do have impact, you know, but, and a lot of it is what we're fed. If we, if we only know one story and we never heard the other story, that's all we're going to know. Right. So there, so, so that has a uh, part of, but, but even if that's the only story we heard, there's the inkling inside a person that's going to tell them that this, yeah, I agree hundred percent or, uh, I'm not sure about that. Even if that's the only story they know, something inside them is going to tell them that there's something else usually. No, and we do it as I've gotten more mature with age. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, no, we have not. We're, we're, we're just big children with more expensive toys. <laughs> you know, I've, I've become more cautious as to, yeah. because you say we leave a mark. You know, I guess, I, you know, we live with some type of thumbprint or print. You, you know, you mark that individual in some way, shape or form, whether they're a child or no, or somebody, you know, our age, a grown adult, you make yes. an impact and you, you, you leave, you leave some type of thumbprint on them, whether good, bad or indifferent. So mm -hmm. I've gotten more conscious as to, okay, what type of mark am I going to le leave on this person? Am I going to obliterate them and, and knife hand them and tell them to basically go pound sand and what they can do with this, with, with their fucking job and their, and their shitty managerial skills. Yes. I'm mm -hmm. hitting kind of close to home. <laughs> or, yeah. or you know what you could just, you know, still do your part, be that, be that, you know, that better person, mm -hmm. choose the higher road and still, you know, cause it's all about the well, people and make it. Well, and, and because what, at the end of the day, when we all go is, what kind of things are they going to say about you? Are they going to yeah. say, "Hey, you know, this individual made a, made a good le left a good presence on made a good mark on me," or you know, I fuck that guy. Goddamn, I'm glad. He's <laughs> so that's very difficult. What you're saying. So two things about that. One, real quick, uh, is I have firmly believed for a very long time. I I, I come up with this thought. 25, 30 years ago, every person you meet for five minutes or more, you've built a relationship with them, even if you never see them again. That's true. But what I mean by that, building that relationship is what did you say and what did you do that impacted them? Was it a positive or was it in a negative? They, they, if they're going to remember you 10 years, they won't think of you again. And 10 years later, something will happen and your a memory of you will come back to them. What is that memory? Is it going to be a positive or a negative? Uh, the second thing is, like you said, being cautious about how you interact with people. We're both combat vets. Uh, we've seen yeah. some horrible stuff. Okay. So, but with that said, what that taught me is, is that we're all vulnerable. Like, you know, we don't know when we're going to go. We're here until we're not. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're human. We're imperfect. We're going to say and do dumb stuff, especially being men. <laughs> men say and do dumb things, and that drives women crazy. But uh, that's a different story. But with that said. That's is, why we live less. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we tend to die uh, before women. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
as we get older and we have those different experiences, whether the combat experiences or, you know, we're in a car wreck, you know, someone could be in a car wreck. They don't even have to be a veteran. They can be in a car wreck. They could be, you know, a police officer. They could be a firefighter. They could be a nurse. Uh, they could, they could just be a, a person that has a normal job and something horrific happens around them and they have that impact in their life um, that you really see the value of life. And, you know, as yeah. it's as hard and difficult as, as it is and as imperfect as we are as individuals, everybody deserves life. Um, and if I deserve life, that means others deserve life. And if I want respect and I want peace in my life, I will strive to provide that respect and peace to others as much as I can, given the situation. You know, it's, it's the whole thing of what type of path life is all is, is today's theme of the show is basically life being a journey and you can choose it to be despite of whatever whatever cards have been dealt and mm -hmm. dealt to you despite your bringing the environment is everybody has a everybody has a choice you can have a choice of well ruminate and and soul mm -hmm. can complain about your current situation or you can see it in a different light because at the end of the day, you, you know, we're still alive. You're still, you're still here, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I mean, it's better than being, and when, when we find, I guess we, we, you know, if, if, in, if, if in fact there is a heaven or whatever, wherever Marines meet, meet up again at, you know, Tun Tavern uh, up in, up in heaven, you know, I guess, I guess we'll be talking like, God damn, Hey, you know what? This shit does exist or, if we if we meet down down at the bottom, it's like God damn, it's hot up in here. This shit doesn't exist. <laughs> you know? It's there. It's there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know, it's again, it's it's all about choices and what is it that that you want to? How is it that you choose to live your life? Um, yeah. And what is it? And what kind of peace you bring to yourself and you bring to others? Yeah. So, you know, we all have traumatic events. I, I just went through a, a recent one myself. Um, I saw it coming. Yeah, I saw it coming for a very long time, uh, but I continue putting forth the effort uh, because um, that was my job. Right. I got paid. I got paid to do a particular job, but I always stepped up above and beyond that job, what I was paid to do. I, I My focus was to help others be successful. And that's what I did. And to do that, you have to be vocal, okay? Bad, bad actors will continue to do bad things when good people don't speak up. And that's a general comment. And I don't mean that specifically associated to my my environment, but no. but basically is is if you see something, an organization or people go, going down a path that they probably shouldn't go down, you see they're either going to get hurt or it's going to cause problems with, uh, for them and with other individuals or it's going to cause problems for your organization. They can have good intentions in place, but if you see them going down the wrong path, I speak up. I have my thoughts through my experiences and uh, and through my uh, training, which, by the way, since the last time I was on the show, 26 years it took me. But I finally got my bachelor of science degree. Congratulations. Well, big dog. By the way, it's it's sitting right here. It's sitting right here <laughs> on my table. So, uh, yeah. well, 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 I've got the electronic yeah. copy, so from the university, so I, I, I'm covered. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's never too late. I mean, it it, it took me uh, it, it took me a long time um, yep, to get that document. Years. I got it up in Fuji, and uh, Craig Kaczynski, Colonel Colonel Kaczynski, yep. he's the guy who uh, you know handed it to me. We had a cer ceremony over there, but dude, right. when I had that document. It's like a ton of weight was off my fucking shoulders because I had this captain, and uh, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, put his name out there, but 
this dude and I, we did not see eye to eye on a lot of things because the guy was just a blooming fucking onion. And uh, <laughs> as a uh, shout out to Scott Gilman, because that's his line. So this fucking idiot. <clears throat> but when I got that degree, you know, I think him and I, towards the end, we had some choice words. And I was like, I told him, like, look, motherfucker, the only difference between me and you is that the fact that you're unrestricted and I'm restricted. But I got the same fucking paper that you do and the same level of education. Fuck off. Get, get, you know, as a matter of fact, get the fuck out of my motor pool. <laughs> so the only reason why I completed that degree, and, and there's two points here. The only reason why I completed that degree is because I'd worked for it for a very long time. And I took a lot of pauses. I went through four degree completion programs to, to get there. But because I worked, I started working at 14. I've been working full time, 40 hours a week plus since I was 16 while I was still in high school. Uh, so 26 years, I was not going to quit. I was going to get it. So I got it. And I got some other certifications along the way, but I'm going to tell you straight up that piece of paper just means I'm trainable. That's all that means. It does not make you smarter than anybody else. No. It just means that you're trainable and that you were able to complete a, 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 a series of tasks. That's all that means. That's yeah. all it means. I know um, plenty of motherfuckers with a driver license that can't drive for shit. Yep, you know? exactly. Well, I know plenty of people with uh, uh, degrees that uh, are very good at their jobs. Uh, but uh, with that said, the other, the second point on that is, I don't know how many people can say this, given the the way education has been built for the last 20, 30 years. I paid for every class that I took myself out of my own pocket. I've not taken any tuition assistance. 26 years. I did take advantage of PA when I was in the Marine Corps. And, Hell. I, I, and a lot of people told me, that's crazy. Why did you do that? And I look at it uh, and my, my point was, it's my goal, it was my effort. I chose when to take what classes. I didn't have to answer back to someone else that I got an A or a B in the class in order to, you know, so I didn't have to pay. It was if I did not do well in the class. Well, it's never that I did. I got A's and B's in all my classes that I completed, but there are a slew of classes along the way that I had to quit while I was in the class because of work or deployments or whatever else. I didn't want to be answerable to anybody else other than myself when it comes to those, those activities. I made the A's and the B's because I put the effort into the A's and B's. I left the classes because I made the choice to leave the classes because I had other priorities, work or deployments or whatever else. So that's why I did it. Now, I don't recommend it to anybody else to do that. I'm just saying that is a key note uh, uh, within my life. I know of nobody else that's done that. And it may be a dumb thing for me to do, but there was a purpose behind it. I did not want to have to answer to anyone else. I am that focused on individual independence, not just my own, but everybody's. Don't put yourself in a position to where you owe other people. Like yesterday was my birthday. I don't celebrate my birthday. Here's why. I don't like receiving. I like to give. I don't want to feel like I owe somebody something. That's just me. Yeah. So, and so I give when I'm at work. I give to family. I give to friends. Whatever it is, if I have to ask somebody for help, that is a very hard thing for me. And I just recently did that for my LinkedIn for some recommendations. I actually asked a few people, hey, could do you mind uh, you know, doing this? With zero expectation of anybody doing it because I would never want someone to feel pressured into doing something if they didn't feel comfortable doing it. No, of course. But, you know, so, but that was a hard thing for me to just ask people for something like that. 
that's just me. I've, I've always been the, at that level of independence. And maybe that's part of my growing up. Maybe that's part of being a Marine. Maybe that's just, you know, uh, while I was growing up, you know, I didn't rely on anybody because the few times I did, I was let down. And, sure. you know, traumatic whatever. events, you know, shape, shape us down the future. Believe you me, uh, yeah. and you, you and I have had extensive conversations about our past, but you know, to add to uh, one of the comments that uh, Tom just posted, basically, you paid for your degree and you had skin in the game and you appreciate it more, unlike other people that basically everything is handed to them and, you know, they could give a shit less. Oh, well, you know what? You know, the government is going to pay yeah. for it, whatever. Uh, it just a, it's just a D or I'll just withdraw or whatever the case. And that's just with it's not just with education related, but anything anything in life. If if you're not vested into something uh, or you don't have some type of skin in the game, well, you know, you, you're not going to put forth the effort. Exactly. I don't borrow money from people. I don't lend money either. I give money. If someone need, if someone that's close to me needs help, I give them money. I have zero expectation of money to come back ever. The last time I borrowed money, <laughs> I, I was a, a, an 18 year old Marine, Fort Bliss, going through Hawk Missile School, and I was going down to El, uh, uh, Juarez and partying out. And this, you got to remember, this is mid 80s, okay, and. I drink and I'm, you know, I was a PFC. I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I turned 18 while I was in boot camp. So I go to my MOS school uh, and can't drink in Texas, but I can drink in Juarez. <laughs> so, you know, PFC 1986, uh, January 1986, I'm a PFC in El Paso and, uh, and my paycheck is $300 one payday and 335 the next payday, two weeks later. That's all I made. Wow, I blew it in like three days. Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> I mean, know. 300 bucks, yeah. I mean, back in the 80s was still yeah. 300 now, bucks. I, yeah. yeah, I blew it all in, in Juarez in about three days. So I called my dad and I said, dad, I really messed up. I learned my lesson, can you send me some money? My dad said, yeah, no problem. It'll be in Western Union in one hour. So I went to the bowling alley on the base where the Western Union was. And sure, sure as anything, it was there an hour later. $20. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> I have not borrowed money since. <laughs> no, and, and you're, you're right, because it creates a lot of animosity. Um, things. That you believe. Uh, last year, I, I just learned a huge lesson with uh, somebody who I thought was close to me. And um, basically, the guy was running. It, it, long story short, the dude was running his own Ponzi scheme, borrowing from Peter, robbing from Paul. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Peter and Paul at the same fucking time, and uh, yeah. it, 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 do, it doesn't, it doesn't play well. But yeah. you know, at the end so, of the day, huh? No, no, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So that runs into something that's that I'm really focused on right now. So I, I'm a lifelong learner uh, uh, on a lot of things. I love to read. I'm a prolific reader. I've moved. I still like reading books, preferably uh, uh, books. But being that overseas and the constant moving and coming and going, it's hard to carry a library with you. So I have leaned heavily over the last decade towards um, online material, you know, right. um, on a computer. I. I I, I just bought a new cell phone, so I actually can actually read it now. <laughs> By the way, everybody, this dude, I mean, damn near had a fucking flip phone still. Uh... No, 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 no. I had an Android, but it was eight years old. It was eight years old. I have not bought myself a cell phone in eight years, and I cracked, broke down last week and got myself the uh, the new uh, flip phone. You were still texting with the keys like A, B, C. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Exactly. But uh, so, well, because I'm frugal with my money, I don't, I buy what I need no, no, I I'm and I buy, I buy, I buy the, I buy what I need and I buy the best of what that is at that time. And that's it. I, I don't like spending money on myself. 
I spend money on other people. Uh, so with that said, that's that's my point. I've learned a lot of stuff. I, I, you know, I like our, I read a lot about archaeology, uh, uh, world history, um, uh, and I, I I love reading uh, uh, science and not science fiction, but science occasionally uh, science fiction something. But t- typically, I I don't read much fiction. But one of my biggest things is I I, I I'm a I read about leadership almost every day. I am a student of leadership because the average person is not a very good leader. It's not, you know, we always say that he's a natural born leader. No such thing. You may have a personality people are attracted to, but that doesn't make you a leader. So, so to be a good leader, you have to study leadership. And especially in, when it comes to uh, people, we talk about business and, and things like that. It's all about people. Um, it's about relationships with people. And Give me your top to... three, uh, your top three leadership. At, you know, I guess for somebody to be a successful leader, a leader of people. Okay, the top one is uh, uh, pay attention, listen. Okay. You, you watch and you listen. I talk a lot. I've always had my whole life, but while I'm talking, I'm watching. I'm watching people's reaction, watching their body language. I watch how they sit in meetings or, or they're standing, uh, standing around. I could have a conversation with this person and I could be watching people over there at the same time and be involved in this conversation and listen to what the person's telling me and what, and, and so, but when you listen, most people listen to respond. Okay. Not Number- listen to not to listen to understand. So you got to listen to respond. Okay. Uh, so listening is number one. Two, you got to watch. That, that was my number two. You have to watch what's going on around you. You will learn so much just by watching people. And, okay. and number three, you have to care. You have to care. If you don't care, it doesn't matter. All right. If you're listening to them and you're watching them, but you don't care, you're you're going to take whatever you you receive, and you're going to uh, a person who doesn't care is going to look to see how they can use that to their advantage. You got to care, and what what it mean what I mean by care is what can you do for that person if they're going through great time and they're doing some really good stuff and they're very happy. Make sure you connect with them to let them know that hey. You, that was awesome. You did great right there. And if they're having, tr- if they, if you're watching them and listening, and, and you see they're having challenges, what can you do to help them through that challenge? You have to care. So some people call it empathy, but it, I, I'll just keep it real simple. You you listen, you watch, and you have to care. Those are my top three. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you, and that's a great way to. Uh, and this show, I mean, and I'm, I know I'm going to be, you and I will be coming on the show together many more times, but Dan, I really appreciate you being here. You taking the time. I'm sure you're dying. You're literally fading away. Yeah. But thanks yeah. so much, bud. I, I really appreciate it, man. <clears throat> always, uh, always a pleasure getting some insight. As to the way you think and some of the great lessons that you provide, man, because they are, they are little gold nuggets uh, that you know one can write down and uh, you know put them in into work. And you, you know, I, I do that all the time. You know, I'm like, I just write shit down and apply it on my side. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. So, yep. But thanks so much for your time, brother. Love you. Thanks for your service, bro. Yeah. Kill, kill. <laughs> I'll see you later. Hey, it was great having. Uh, you know, Dan providing some awesome advice and basically just an insight uh, in life in life in general, because again, it's not a, it's not a, you know we're all, the destination is all going to be the same for all of us, it, but it's the journey. How is it that we're going to make that journey that much better? So, with that being said, I just want to say happy birthday, Istemas, Daisuke. Hey, if you've been ruminating with all you know all that stuff, give me a holler, shout out. 
talk to the VA, call somebody. But again, we, nobody, none of us want to be doing push-ups and all kinds of other shit because it, it ain't going to bring you back. So reach out to somebody. And if you haven't spoken to a buddy, do a fucking buddy check. Yes. With that being said, index everybody. Ura gets them. I'll see you next week. Bye. Peace.